So here's how to boost performance and FPS and reduce the input lag on PS5 in 2024 in any game you play. The first setting is resolution. There are two situations where the output resolution from the console can help with increased performance in the game you play. Number one, when a game supports a lower native resolution. For example, The Last of Us Part 1 Remake or Part 2 Remastered supports 1440p natively. And if you choose that in the console settings, you can get higher FPS on average in the game compared to when you choose 2160p because the game doesn't need to upscale the picture anymore. Number two, when a game reduces visual quality and some graphical effects based on the output on your PS5. For example, in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, if you use 1080p instead of 1440p or 4K, you'll get higher FPS on average based on a 3-hour test I've recently made in multiple sections and monitoring the output. But you should consider that in some cases, lower resolution can cause higher input delay for the controller if the game doesn't support that natively. And in those cases, the picture gets upscaled to 4K first, then downscaled to whatever you choose, which needs a bit more processing power. And for that, you may want to keep it at default and prefer a stable controller connection. The other thing you can do is depending on the game, change upscaling settings or turn them off and see if the performance increases significantly. Number two, VRR and in-game vSync. Some games allow you to use unlocked frame rate if your TV supports VRR and 120Hz mode. For example, in Spider-Man 2, you could increase the performance significantly by using that option which could result in a lower picture quality, but could improve the performance. In other scenarios, you might be able to go over 120 FPS or 60 if the game supports a V-Sync option. For example, in Rainbow Six Siege, by turning V-Sync off, you can get more frame rates even though PS5 only supports 120 Hz. The game becomes more responsive and the controller input lag reduces significantly. Gently. Number 3. Visuals and Performance Settings In most games, there are some options to choose between higher picture quality or performance. Some can provide up to 60, while others provide options even for higher than 90 up to 120 FPS. I prefer anything above 60 FPS if I'm playing a story game. But for online games, I go with the max performance mode to get the highest possible FPS. There's an option on PS5 where you can change the default game preset. This could be used by the games to optimize the settings once you open them. But sadly, not every game follows this setting, and it's best to check the in-game settings yourself. However, I'm wondering, will this option affect the console or the way the controller works? What if it can reduce the input lag? Let me know if you'd like to see a test for this option in future videos. Number 4 is 120 FPS mode on 60Hz TVs or monitors. You heard me right. Even if your TV doesn't support 120Hz, there is a way to force PS5 to output 120Hz on a 60Hz device. There are multiple devices that can do that. They accept the signal and then convert the output just to increase FPS, increase accuracy, and reduce input lag. I'd highly suggest checking the experts to find what's the best device for that. But I tested one of them for this video to see if the controller input lag reduces, and it did. It's like you are playing in 120 FPS mode, however, the picture is still 60 FPS on your TV. It's worth it if you need a higher performance but you can't afford a new TV. Number five is optimizing console settings. First, I have to tell him that it may not directly affect the in-game performance. Even if your console gets stuck or the UI freezes while you are in the game, the game would still work fine in most cases. But I've seen some scenarios where these console settings affected the game's performance. So let's go through the recommended console settings. The first option I recommend is disabling remote play if you don't use it at all. The second one is if you have an M.2 SSD that is faster than your PS5's SSD. Keep your competitive games on that SSD. I'm not gonna recommend any specific brands here, but when you are looking for an M.2 SSD, look for SLC cache if you are looking for fast transfer times and kind of writing on the SSD. And if you are looking for the best performance in the game, look for read speeds. The third one is to enable ALLM so that the console will activate game mode on your TV for the least picture input lag. However, not every TV supports this option, so it's best to check your TV settings too. Some people think HDR can affect performance. In many tests I've made from the past year, it can affect the controller input lag depending on the game, but not the frame rate. So you can use it if you like. The reason I have it off for this video is because I'm recording on SDR. The adjust display area will not help with increasing performance. I've tested it multiple times in multiple resolutions except 1440p because you can't do it there. And this option didn't increase FPS. It just makes the output picture ratio smaller or bigger. 
The resolution stays the same and has zero affection on performance. The fourth one is Bluetooth. Some people think if they turn off Bluetooth on PS5 and use the controller with a USB cable, it can help them reduce the input lag. But that's incorrect. First of all, every DualSense controller is limited to 250Hz polling rate on USB. And compared to Bluetooth, in most games we tested the input lag, there was a 1 to 4 milliseconds increased delay by using USB. However, if you have a DualSense edge, it's recommended to connect and use it with the USB cable method because it supports a 1000Hz polling rate on USB. But you don't need to turn off Bluetooth, not at all. The fifth one is voice command. If you don't use it often, I recommend keeping it off. Aside from randomly picking up my voice from time to time and interrupting my game, I found it to be effective on FPS even when the window goes away for a few moments sometimes, or at least use the fastest response timeout for less interruption. I also found the moment you get a trophy and this automatic video saves, there's a small drop in shooter FPS games. So if you play online games and don't want any FPS drops, keep trophy video only for something important like platinum or gold. Or if you don't care about trophies and also like to save storage, set it to none. The next option is auto upload. It's a good one to upload your screenshots and video clips to PSN and being able to download them on your phone. But consider this can interrupt your gameplay by uploading the videos while you are playing and not only causing an increase on your ping but sometimes reducing the gameplay performance. The same with downloading games while playing online games. Number 6. Best connection method. For controllers as mentioned, I suggest Bluetooth for DualSense and USB for DualSense Edge. Also ensure to keep the communication method so that it uses what you want. For the network, I suggest using an Ethernet cable. Even a 20 meter cable is more stable than Wi Fi in some cases, unless you have a great gaming router. Number 7, the storage. I suggest keeping the PS5 console as clean as possible. Even if you play a lot of games, try to keep 20 to 40 GB empty because I found in some cases when the console is close to the max storage, games may not work properly. There needs to be some space for cache and other stuff. Using an external storage for PS4 games or an M.2 SSD for playing games would be nice. Number 8. The reality of cleaning. I'm not asking to open and clean your PS5 for higher performance. Because what is proven to me, as long as your PS5 doesn't overheat, you'll be getting a similar performance to what it does when it's cool. But it's best to keep your console cool and clean. And aside from having open areas around it, I'd suggest using dust covers when you don't want to use your console for a long period. And there is something even more interesting. The dust plugs it for PS5. These are soft silicone pieces that you can plug into any ports of your console that is not being used. And this way you can keep them safe and clean from dust. Even if you are in a clean place and you think it's all safe, there are small particles which you don't see them until you turn on the lights and you notice how dusty they are. I received both dust cover and dust plug from Play Vital for review. And you can check them for yourself from the first link in the comments or description. If you use the discount code DANCEDEDGE, you'll get a 10% discount for any purchase. There are a lot more products for PS5 in Play Vital, and I will make reviews of them soon after this video. They are very good in quality, but I will update my thoughts the more I use them. It's been more than a month now. Number 9. Don't start in rest mode. I've been in situations in some games where I left the console in rest mode while the game was opened and suspended in the background. And afterwards, I've had frame drops and I needed to restart the game. It happened only once to me in Star Wars Jedi Survivor, but to ensure you are always getting the best performance, I suggest not continuing the game after rest mode, instead open it again. Number 10. Best settings for COD Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone 3 I'm working on a video where I want to help you get a higher FPS in COD and reduce the frame drops. There are a few options I found so far. If you pay attention in COD, the FPS drops when you get shot or you shoot some walls or some trees and many more situations. What I found helping with the stabilizing FPS is using either a lower fidelity cast settings or keeping it completely off. The resolution settings won't help in this case, but having on-demand texture stream off helped in some cases. The third setting I found so far is to turn off gore effects and then restarting the game. This is not all and I'll be making an in-depth video for this one later. Number 11. Safe mode settings. If you ever felt your console is slow or it's not responsive, I suggest trying a few steps in safe mode once in a while. Turn off the console and hold the power button for a few seconds to hear a second beep and then release it. Connect your controller with the USB cable and first select clear cache and rebuild database. Clear the system software cache in the next step and afterwards select rebuild database. It will not delete any information or the settings or 
the games from the console but rather helps with better performance. Number 12. Upgrade your DualSense I recently tried back buttons on a typical DualSense and they are a very good upgrade with almost zero input like to boost your performance in the game. If you like to see how they work and upgrade your DualSense you can check this video from the end screen. I'll catch you there.